morning, good morning everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. For those of you that are new to our channel and to uh, our social media, uh, my family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho and we have solar power and live a traditional lifestyle, enjoy sharing our lifestyle with others as well as faith-led preparedness, wilderness survival. We also talk about autism and season in our lives. This has been a crazy season in our lives, not just um, the season of the year, but <clears throat> getting the mountain boy off to school and uh, it was just like a progression. We hit like the beginning of September and it was just this mad progression into this wild and woolly pace. Good morning, Miss Kelly. And this pace has just been non-stop. Uh, I've been helping the mountain man on some construction jobs. Good morning, Miss Diana, and have been pushing my body out of its limits. I've been stressing my body greatly just with the pace we've been under. And yesterday, I took the day and I did a lot of self-care, did a bunch of treatments, and finally, I'm feeling like I have my body back in the right place. It's been pretty grueling and pretty rough. And you know, you go through these things. You go through different seasons in life. You go through the different seasons of the year. They all bring different things to the table. And um, today's topics, we, we will feed in on all of that. I know many of you, Miss Kelly out there, has been uh, busting her tail too all year uh, with their uh, traditional living and homesteading and farmsteading there at her place. And that's why I wanted to talk about um, why we chose off-grid living and making decisions. Uh, we chose off-grid living because in our hearts and in our makeup, uh, we have always felt like we were born a hundred years too late. Many people read uh, Little House on the Prairie and watch different documentaries and, and different uh, read different books and get drawn into the romance of the traditional lifestyle and the off-grid living and the homesteading. And um, what they don't realize is what is involved. And Kelly, I know, will chime in on this one with me. There is a romance to it. If it is your thing and if you are called to it, good morning, Miss Cammie. Um, there is an extreme romance to that lifestyle. I live it every day and I absolutely love it. I could never, ever go back. And... Um, I, I enjoy the pace, even though it's crazy and it has been crazy. I enjoy what we do. I enjoy what it entails. I do enjoy the traditional aspect of things. But when I say it's romantic and you're new to the lifestyle and you are interested in the lifestyle, that may be all you hear. But like I just said, it's grueling. It's hard living a traditional lifestyle. It involves a lot more work and there are many um, modern conveniences that um, have been added uh, since the traditional lifestyle was set to make things so much easier. And that's what most people are accustomed to. We have chose to live life traditionally without a microwave, without a lot of the modern conveniences. My dishwashers are right here. 
Um, we don't have wood delivered to our home. We go and we find the trees. We oftentimes um, have to use a winch to pull them up or down the mountain a good distance because my mountain man is a wood snob, which is a good thing because he goes after the wood with low pitch, which means we have less work in our chimneys and um, it's a longer burning wood as, as well as a hotter burning wood. So there's a lot of benefits to it, but as a result, there is an extreme amount of work. And the part that goes along with why we chose to live an off-grid lifestyle is making decisions. And it's called making educated decisions. And that will follow through this whole conversation today. I see there's some comments. Um, Kelly says yes and took some time off for a few days. Good, you deserved it and it felt good and your body needed it and so did your mind. I know it. I know where I was at. I know how priceless that downtime is, that slow pace, that self-care. I did uh, a foot treatment yesterday. Well, I did two foot treatments yesterday. I did a hand treatment and I, I soaked for 45 minutes. And I feel like a new me. And, and in addition to that, I did work then, but I took that time and I didn't feel guilty for it. I relaxed myself. I spent some time with God, extra time with God. And it is very renewing, very renewing. Diana says, I am waiting for our romance to begin. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, and that's, that's what I'm seeing as a result of YouTube and Facebook and all the social media and everybody posting their pretty fancy photos and, and showing their videos and making things look really easy. It's really easy to do that. And it's also, um, you know, some of the videos, they may not be easy looking, but people don't realize that that's not just a once and done thing. Fetching firewood is an all year thing for us because we do it as soon as we can get into the woods and we do it gradually so that we're not left um, harvesting six, eight cord of firewood all at one time. That's backbreaking. And we pace it, we, we pace ourselves, we spread it out so that we can also enjoy life amongst our chores. Um, our chores are enjoyable to us. Although we are pulling logs up and down mountains and loading trucks and coming home and having to split the firewood, it's good exercise. It's good, healthy, sweating, rejuvenating, quiet in the outdoors, rejuvenating. It is very priceless. And But that's not the case for everybody. And the thing is, you know, we chose off-grid living for a multitude of reasons. It was a passion and a desire for both of us for forever. I wanted to raise my son in the mountains in a cabin. I could not find a cabin and I ended up on a farm. It was a 150 acre farm surrounded by cornfields. I was, had a mile long lane at the end of the lane by myself with a river running 100 yards off my front porch, eagles teaching their young to fly off the mountain. And when I first got there, I wasn't happy. I wanted a cabin in the woods. It didn't take me long, trust me. A couple mornings on the porch swing and I was good to go. But I wanted and I yearned for that cabin in the woods and I wanted a wholesome place to raise my son. And then I met the mountain man. And his desires is so crazy how much we are alike. Um, we are in this new season of being empty nesters. And um, it's the first time in 26 years I have not had to worry about my young. <laughs> for lack of better terms, my children. So, um, and, and it has allowed us to step back into our passions a little more and just to live a little more freely. If you're an empty nester, you know what I'm talking about. Well, we have just been having so much fun. We have fun doing our work. We have fun doing whatever it is we're doing. You know, we could be washing dishes and or making dinner together, you know, whatever it is. We have a good time. We mess with each other. We have we you know, when when he gets honorary because he's tired, I'll mess with him and he ends up smiling. You know, you learn how to work with one another, but I'm really excited um in that we have so much in common, which is you know, usually when people are put together, it's always stated that opposites attract. But God knew what we both needed, and it is just amazing. We love the same things. 
We enjoy doing the same things together. Um, a lot of people can't um, work, play, sleep, exist together all the time um, and it be a healthy situation. For us, it works. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's ups and downs. There's always ups and downs. There's always chaos. There's always stuff. But we had a passion for this lifestyle and God brought us here and we were able to give our son a amazing place to grow up, to thrive, to come out of his autism shell. And um, like I said, I couldn't go back. I will live this lifestyle until I pass on to heaven because I cannot go back into living in town, in a grid home. Um, this is just where I'm called to be. I feel it in my body and my soul and in my spirit. It's just an amazing, amazing life. But that romance gets really, really um, advertised. And a lot of people don't realize what all's involved in living a life like this. You can live off the grid and still be living a modern day life. Don't get me wrong, you can. It's gonna cost you a lot more money than it does us. We're very frugal. We don't use our generator very much when the batteries are low. Um, sometimes we shut the house off instead of turning the generator on. Um, if things were to ever fall apart and power was to disappear, we would be okay with that. But I know that most people wouldn't. And when we say a traditional life, we do, you know, we, we have a wood stove, we cook on a, a propane stove, but we also cook outside. We, we do a lot of things the old fashioned way. My coffee grinder is not electric. I have to hand crank it and I am perfectly good with that. My coffee bean um, roaster is a whirly pop popcorn maker on my, on my stove. So it's a choice, but it's also in making good decisions and knowing what it is you want out of life and knowing for sure that it's really what you want before you invest in it. So it's good to do your research. That was one of the biggest things we did before we moved here. People thought we were nuts, you know, to pick up everything and just move 2,500 miles away to a place we've never seen before and build our own home. But we researched and researched and researched and researched and researched some more. We knew what we were getting into. We knew all about the area. We, we knew things about the area and where to find things that the local people didn't even know how to find because we had already researched it. And it's just, it's, it's important to make educated decisions. So why am I saying this today? Because I want you to, if you are interested in this lifestyle and you are following me because of this lifestyle, I want you to really think about what you want out of a life like this and how you want to embrace it and to do the research that's involved behind it. And researching today can be a little tricky because sometimes you gotta really evaluate your resources. You know, a lot of people will share the romance and not share the struggle. But the truth is, it's, it's not all a bed of roses. There's a lot of work involved. And um, just in raising animals alone, there's a lot of work involved. And um, what happens a lot today is people get interested in it and they want to embrace this and they don't do their research. So they get animals and they go through this absolute nightmare or they embrace the lifestyle and it wasn't what they thought it was gonna be. You know, there's a lot of homesteaders and off-gridders that have their homesteads open to the public for tours and for um, classes. And that might be something um, that will be opening up in the future with us. Right now, that's not an option because we're in the process of selling our home. But it's important to go to local farms and see what's involved with the animals. See what is involved in living the lifestyle. See how difficult it is if you're going to purchase a homestead in a certain place and you want wood fire, 
Um, you better find out if there's trees. We built a cabin down in Wyoming and there are no trees surrounding that property for miles and miles and miles. It's all sagebrush and sand. So you've got to do your research and be aware of what you are embarking on. And I'm not doing this to be doom and gloom. I'm doing this to be um, pointing out the realities of a traditional and off-grid homesteading lifestyle. And again, you need to make the decision on how you want to embrace it, how you want to live it. Um, for us, we knew that we wanted to live it traditionally. I talked about this the other week, the difference between preppers and um, tradition, people living traditionally. Um, one stockpiles things and knows some, the other stockpiles things and knows lots because in order to live that lifestyle in a traditional fashion, you need to know a lot because you are making the things happen. The other thing is if things fall apart and you have not only the skills but the tools to live traditionally, you won't really skip much of a beat when the power goes out and you have all the tools to keep doing what you do on a daily basis. So both are important, being a prepper and having traditional skills. I think that they should be merged together as a whole because one without the other doesn't do you any good. And that's just my opinion. But I could have tons of stuff here, but if I don't have the skills, what good's it gonna do me? If I don't know how to get firewood, if I don't know how to uh, harvest meats and butcher and um, how to take care of water, how to find water, all those things, you know, um, are really, really important. So when you're making decisions on your life, your lifestyle, your future dreams, make sure you're really doing your homework and you know why you're embracing this, not just to join the movement that has formed with off-grid living and uh, traditional living and homesteading. And, and trust me, it's a great movement. In my opinion, there's no other way. I, I just, I go to town and I am totally overwhelmed by it. I, I, I can't wait to get back home. My life is simple here and I like it that way and I've made it that way. So when you go out into the world and into the towns and all the hustle bustle, you just, it's just like ants scurrying to me. And granted, we are at a wicked pace right now, but at the same time, it's, it's a pace that's rewarding because of what we are accomplishing. Where I look in town and it's just people chasing. I don't, uh, sometimes I don't even know if they know what they're chasing. Know what you want. Know why you want it and experience it some if you have never experienced it. The Mountain Man and I both grew up on farms. We were accustomed to animals. We were accustomed to traditional living. Um, we have many of the tools from our grandparents and great-grandparents here on the homestead, and we use them. Um, so it was something that was kind of instilled and passed down to us. We both had the desire to leave the farm and, and embrace life and get out of the valley and get out of the farm. We wanted something more. There's more to life. And as we both got out and had the more, we realized that what we wanted was back where we came from. It's in our roots. And the more we know and the more we're sponges to knowledge, the better off we will be. And that's even true if you prefer to live in an apartment in town, but you'd like to know stuff. Educate yourself. Learn things. And... and Never stop learning. That is one of the key things, in my opinion, is to just constantly be learning new things, whether it's something creative, whether it's something um, useful, but just keep learning and keep challenging your brain and, and don't just make decisions lightly. I, I say that because I think it's really important for people to understand the pros and the cons. And this kind of all leads into our topic for the day. In, in that there are pros and cons to everything. And it's just really important that we um, know what we want and are sure that what we are wanting is our own thing and not um, our families pushing us into things or society making us think that we have to do something a certain way. 
because we have the ability to make decisions for ourselves and to do things for ourselves. And that is one of the biggest reasons that we are here was to be able to live the life by our terms, our desires, and to do the things we enjoy versus the world dictating that to us. And I think that's really, really important. Um, let me see here. Kelly says, totally and no going back. If anything, going more into the traditional aspects, it's hard work yet satisfying. And you will never get a better workout. I'm telling you. Um, I was helping the mountain man. I think I shared that last week. Um, we were putting a, a ceiling in a garage and we were using OSB. Eight foot by four foot sheets of OSB going in above our heads. And I'm on the scaffolding. And my arms, my shoulders are the things that need the most work as far as muscular. And I was about three inches too short, even on my tiptoes. I couldn't hold it with my head up to the ceiling. So I had to use my hands. And when something was going awry, you know, I was having problems holding it up there. And also climbing up and down the scaffolding all day long for two, three days. Um, it was a challenge, but I like that challenge. I always have loved the challenge of pushing myself and, and, um, being strong and, and, um, also being a good helper. So we had a really good time and I was really grateful that I was able to help him and able to do that. That's, that's also a good sign for me that I was able to do that stuff. So, um, and that is exactly what it's like when we are on a homestead and we are doing the things we do. It is, you know, I, I have always loved the good sweat you get when you're chopping firewood. And I know that sounds crazy, but you're using your lat muscles, your back muscles, your leg muscles, your arm muscles, your forearms. You know, I mean, it's a good workout. It's a really good workout and it just feels good. It's just like an all body and mind kind of thing. I don't know. I just have always enjoyed that. So doing the kind of things we do is is rewarding to us and is enjoyable. It's stuff we enjoy doing. Um, but not everybody is going to enjoy those, those tasks. But yes, Kelly, absolutely. Uh, stepping further back in time, like the creativity side of me, the things I'm researching now are making the traditional jute baskets. I showed you the pine needle basket I'm working on. It's making all those old traditional crafts and and at the time they were crafts they were out of necessity they were using those pine needle baskets to carry their water and utilizing them in their day to day so i am learning and choosing to learn all those skills because for one i think it's amazing and two um if things were to fall apart i know how to i know how to do this stuff and uh, we have clay in our soil. I, I wanna learn how to forage that and be able to utilize it to make pottery. Um, there's, there's so much we can do with the things in our surroundings, but learning these traditional skills, I think is so valuable, so, so valuable. And not only can you um, bring back lost art, you can use it as a craft, make money doing it, but then also have that craft to fall back on. So there's so much, so much benefit to it. Good morning, Miss Courtney. Firewood is a year-round job, as are many other chores. Exactly. Good morning, Miss Tammy. Good morning, Angela. Craig and I thoroughly enjoy being empty nesters. I guess it's easier because all of our girls are doing well. Well, and that makes a huge difference. When our kids are comfortable and doing well, you know, we can thrive too. Uh, the first week for Austin was a little rough. He was struggling with the uh, boredom and, um, you know, most of the kids, well, as far as he said, all the kids there smoked, you know, and if you weren't a smoker, you didn't have anything to do. And he's like, I can't even stand the smell of smoke. I don't want to go hang out with that. You know, so there was a lot of new conditioning for him the first week, but he's really doing well. And yes, that makes such a huge difference when our kids are doing well. And, and it is fun and, and it takes, becoming an empty nester again enables us to, in some ways, go back to a, a form of dating and, and learning each other again and learning to be able to do things together. Cause often, I think that's why we've enjoyed this season so much, our hunting season, We've always had guests, and don't get me wrong, I've loved our guests, 
being here and entertaining and, and you know, showing them how we live. But I would have not been able to hunt with him or trap with him. And now we've been hunting and trapping together and just having a really, really good time. And I love it too because my place is outside. Even though I am the housewife, I do my chores in the house, um, outside calls me. So I've got to keep it evenly balanced and get my my time outside. It's really important. That's what keeps me uh, grounded, for lack of better terms. Good morning, Teresa. Let me see here. Angela says, <laughs> still having problems with my fingers being so dry and rough that the machines are not acknowledging. There we go. Okay. All right, Angela says, we are in rural town of maybe 300 and are still feeling crowded because of lots of loud noises from neighbors. We finally got a generator this past year because our power goes out two to three times a year, which puts our water out too. We have lots of animals and they cost a lot. Yeah, so there's always, there's always things to consider. Um, and it's really important you know, to do your research on, on, and decide, make a decision on where you want to live. Do you want neighbors? How far out do you want to be? Um, do you have medical things you need to be considering? Um, how close are the things that you need? Like for Austin, we were looking for, um, at the time schooling, cause I wasn't going to homeschool initially. Um, and services that are available for autism and different things. So it's really important to be really thinking of everything before you embark on a journey. And and there is a lot of work. Things do cost a lot of money. So, you know, like um, with the animals, I know Kelly uh, raises um, different varieties of animals. She also uh, does hay to make up for the expense of having to purchase um, more hay, but it's also a lot more work um, harvesting all that hay. And worrying, this year she had to worry about it getting rained on, and it, it did actually get rained on quite a few times, and it was still ended up through great prayer, uh, being uh, able to be raked and baled and, and put away. So, but, but there's all kinds of things that you've gotta consider, things you gotta think about. And you know, people think um, that the animals are so amazing and how awesome they are, but they don't realize the work that's involved, the cost involved to feed them, and um, being able to water the animals. Um, like uh, Angela said, you know, when the power would go out, they would lose water. Well, that doesn't mean just for them, that means for their animals too, unless they've got a pond or a creek or something running on the property. So there's so many things to think about when it really comes to wanting to homestead or live traditional or live off the grid. You know, if you want to do it in an old fashioned traditional way, there's a lot to be considered. Um, yes, prep studying, Diana says, exactly, exactly. And you know, you've got a lot of both sides being shared on the internet, but you don't have a lot of the prep studying being shared. And I really, really, really feel that that is the way to go. Um, I just, I just see so many people that are jaded on on both sides, and it's really important to put it all together. Um, like I said last week, if it wouldn't have been for our canning shelves being full three years ago when we went six and a half months without an income, we wouldn't have been able to eat, and we we had no problems, and we had plenty of food to share. So planning ahead is also extremely important. Okay, so come on, there we go. Kelly says, absolutely, water access to it is our number one priority. Then we are looking for trees and open land for pasture with irrigation. We can raise much of our own hay needs on just three quarters of an acre as a hay field only with at least two cuttings of hay. Animals afford you to eat healthier, but organic feeds are expensive. Exactly, exactly. And we were doing the organic chicken feed and just got to a point where we couldn't afford to do that with us trying to move and our financial situation. So we ended up having to butcher our chickens. It's just, 
being prepared, making good decisions, and realizing some of the things you're going to have to do is just all part of it. Um, let me see here. Come on, ring finger. Kelly says... <laughs> So true, Mike and I both moved to the city and after just a few months hated it and spent five years getting out of the main city into a suburb, which was better, but still not what our hearts and souls desired. We moved here 20 years ago and it's still not what we totally desire, looking at land and plan, if God blesses us to build from the ground up on more acres. Awesome. And well, and that's all we can do is pray for God to open those doors because when we are walking in his will... <laughs> Um, life is so much better. He has a plan for each of our lives. Oh, I can't get Tammy's to open up now. There we go. Okay. And, and, and really, um, the power of prayer is huge. You will see as we move on to the next topic, um, how much I believe so. Um, Tammy says we aren't right in the city, more rural, but when the air quality in the valley is deemed bad enough, we aren't allowed to use our cook stove, even if it was on our only heat source was the same where I grew up. That is important to know if you use wood as the only heat source. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot about that. And we have been dealing with poor air quality lately here. Um, the air has been being pushed back down. And I know that's what you're dealing with in your area there with the, um, the valley and that. And that's crazy. Um, when she first told me that, I was like, wow, I never heard of that before. And, you know, we would be, we would be in big trouble too. That's our main source of heat. Um, and eventually I will be using a cook stove, um, which is so awesome. But it is important to know those things. It's important to know, like uh, Angela said about the power outages. Not so much our direct area, but about an hour from here. All winter long, the power's out for days, weeks at times, because the trees... In, with the heavy snow and ice and wind fall on the power lines. Well, they've gotten smart out here and they are running everything under the ground now. They've started that and uh, are making tracks. I'm really impressed how far along they have gotten. Um, <clears throat> but knowing what happens in your direct area, being able to talk to somebody in the direct area. One of my resources was the person at the post office. When I, would, I called to create my P.O. box and do all that, I'd talk to them and ask them all kinds of questions and drill them. I'd talk to the lady that worked for the county that gave us our address here and, and our building permit and, you know, picked her brain. You know, you want to know as much as you can about the area. How, how hard is it to get food for your animals where you are? You know, right here we can get food for animals, but it's really pricey. Um, hour or two away, you can take a, a truck and barrels and, and get feed from a grain store. We don't have that right here. So knowing those things and doing that research, you know, um, rural is good. Being further back in is great. Um, but the further back in you go, the more things you need to be considering. Um, can you get back out? We were stuck here eight and a half weeks the first winter. Now we could have probably pushed out, but we didn't want to ruin our vehicle when we didn't have to. Um, my web design business was what was keeping us going then. And um, we got in out of the out of the elements, we're in the house and we decided that it was just time to hunker down, kick back a little bit and um, enjoyed ourselves. But there's a lot more things that you need to consider when you're further back in. Are you part of the fire district? Are you, um, is 911 an option for you? If it is not, how are you going to get out on emergencies? So knowing these things, researching these things, and being aware of these things is so important. Oh, Kelly, you're teasing. I love it. Yes, Kelly has um, gifted us with a cook stove. Um, so I just need to get there to get it. So that's just so awesome. Our new home will have a cook stove. So I am so excited. Thank you, sweet friend. Um, sometimes insurance is an issue when back in further too, especially if in a wooded area because of fire dangers. We are fortunate that we are just on the cusp of the fire district and, and the ambulance um, as well. So 
otherwise we would have had troubles as well. Um, wood stoves are becoming very difficult to insure. They're trying to get rid of wood stoves and ban wood stove usage. And I think that's absolutely ridiculous. And I don't think that at a government level that should be an option. That should be a personal option, but we're not gonna go there today. Um, good morning, Jason. Glad to have you joining me. So, you know, these are all things you've gotta consider and making educated decisions is extremely important. Not only do your research, but go out. If you know people that are doing it, go out and spend a day. I did a day in the life of Tammy this summer and I did not post a video, I need to edit it yet. To give you an idea of what just one of my days looks like. None of my days are the same. I'm sure Kelly will say the same, that um, our days are different dependent on our animals' needs, our homestead's needs. Um, if something went upside down, everything shifts and changes, so you gotta you know, improvise and go with it. So no, really, no two days are the same. Uh, Kelly says EPA new regulations don't include wood cook stoves though. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good that they're not taking that away. But still, that just that just drives me crazy. Plus, um, and I see the point in this. The mountain man was going to make a wood stove for our home, and he was going to put an uh, oven on the side of it, and and we wouldn't be able to get insured through the insurance company with a homemade stove. It would have to be one that has a label on it. So I get that because. Um, that could be an extreme fire hazard if you have people that don't really know how to weld and so forth. But, um, but yeah, I'm glad they have not regulated the cook stoves. Angela says we're looking at a property that's pretty far out. The power was out in their area for a full month. It's rural farm and a 50 mile trip to our main town. House needs rebuilt. I'm kind of scared. Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> um, okay, Tammy was responding to Kelly. Um, I think that's awesome. If you're scared, whatever it is that's scaring you, do your research on it um, and do a lot of praying. As you will see moving forward on the next topic, I do a lot of praying and there's a lot of value and amazing miracles that happen through prayer. Um, Fear is oftentimes what holds us back, that fear is from the enemy. Fear and worry are completely from the enemy. Um, that's him trying to uh, jade our decisions. Um, when we do all of our research and we, we have investigated things, um, let me put it this way. When we make decisions in our home, we don't make them without praying. We, we, we come up with decisions and ideas and then we pray about them and we ask God to uh, mutually show us so that when we come back together and, and have the same sentiments that God is directing that. Because we don't want to be out of his will for starters. And the other thing is when you focus on things that way, you lose a lot of your fear and worry. And, and I've told you guys, I do not have fear and worry anymore. Since I got sick, those two things have completely left me. They are not part of my makeup any longer. And I used to be a worrier. When we look to God for the answers, we trust God for the answers, and we alleviate fear and worry, you can then feel that gut feeling that is typically the Holy Spirit 99.9% .9 of the time telling you that something is up. And when you learn to pay attention to those things, um, it certainly helps in your decision making. A lot of times we have that feeling and we disregard it, whether it's stealing something off of a shelf or whether it's making decision on a home. So many of us ignore the Holy Spirit guiding us. And I know I use two very drastic things there, but we, we ignore the Holy Spirit guiding us. And when we do that and we step out in that and make our own decision instead of following God's, that's when everything gets ugly. That's when you are, you are working out of his will and therefore you are on the wrong path. So um, it's not easy. So that's why I'm saying when you make your decisions, 
one of the things we do and will always do is we pray about it. Other people may offer advice and everything else, but we go with what we feel God is directing us to do. We've made the decisions a couple times to follow um, the guidance of others and it was not the right path. So we have learned, and even if that means waiting on his answers and waiting on his timing, I'm sitting here in a home that you know I am hoping will sell before we lose. We're waiting on his timing. That's total trust. That's total faith in his decision making and not mine. Not that we're sitting here and not making, you know, doing anything. We are doing everything in our power otherwise. But his timing, and his timing is best. So, um, just my thoughts on that. Um, I'll be praying for you on that, Angela. Good morning, Miss Holly. So, now, this was something I coined, uh, gosh, back in, I think, 2013, maybe, somewhere around there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. This was one of the scenes. This is a photo I took. Oh, it's pretty. Uh, that's a photo I took locally. That barn is no longer there, there because people were stealing the boards and it collapsed. But that was oh, one of my favorite places to admire. And um, I coined the, the phrase, the quote, homesteading is like a marriage. It takes time, faith, patience, understanding, love, tenderness, strength, and the willingness to work through the unexpected. So that's kind of why I put these two together today. Last week I gave you guys homework. I don't know if any of you um, watched them or not. I'm hoping you did. Let's see, anybody watch them? And if so, what did you think of them? If you did not watch them, down below in the description below, there's a section that says homework. And there are three videos there. Uh, one is um, God's Marriage from Genesis 2.24. And then there's the husband's role and the wife's role in marriage. And I highly encourage you to not only watch these, but watch them with your children. This is the best um, description and sermons I've ever heard on what a marriage is. In our society today, you've got women fighting for the women's rights. So when they hear the word submit, that is an insult. You know, I'm a strong woman. I said this last week. I'm a strong woman. Um, I'm independent. But I feel that God's design is really important. And I, and I truly believe that when biblical marriage is walked out correctly it is an absolutely breathtaking and amazing experience there are still struggles there are still fights there are still upheavals but compared to not walking it out um there's really no comparison to me uh when like I said, it is possible for a strong, independent woman to submit. There is nothing wrong with that. Because when you are, when biblical marriage is walked out, you will want to submit. Because it is a loving environment where the man's role is the head of the house. He is taking care of his family. He is not dictating to his family. He is caring for his family. There is a huge, huge difference. Good morning, Sanford and Nikki. And it's really, really important that we understand our roles. Another thing I see happening in society, and I'm not trying to pick on women. Um, it goes both ways. It'll probably even itself out as we discuss this. But because there's so many women that want to be the independent, non-submitting, powerful woman, we are denying our men the ability to be the heads of the household, which they are called to do. When they are in that place, they are empowered, not in a bad way. They are encouraged. 
They are, um, it completes them. It completes what they are meant to do and be. When they have a even powerful woman that is standing by their side, submitting to them and being their help me and respecting them, they in turn are a very powerful, powerful man. A man that will then love his family, put down his life for his family, respect his family. That's what biblical marriage is. That is what God is asking and looking for. And it is with a man and a woman. And again, I mentioned this last week. I have no problem with... Uh, I... I shared something on my Facebook wall the other day that touched on political correctness. And just as he despises political correctness, so do I. Because everybody gets offended. But I have no problem with gays of any kind. I love the person, but I do not love the sin. And I will not uh, encourage it on social media just to fit in. I, I won't. Because it's a sin. So is um, same-sex marriages in the church. Shame on the church. It's not right. It is not what God called. Is, is what God is calling for. That's Sodom and Gomorrah right there. And I may lose people for being this blunt. But it's important that people know this. It's important that people realize the importance of this. And it's important to me and to my heart to see... The beauty of biblical marriage walked out more in our country because it is a beautiful thing. I've experienced the complete opposite of that and, um, and, and where the roles were not properly walked out and, and where the man uh, took his role too far and it's not a pleasant place to be. And unfortunately with marriage, you know, marriage is meant to be long term till death do us part. And if we are walking that out properly and trusting God and looking to God and in God's word and, and listening to the Holy Spirit to keep us from making mistakes, we are, we are, going to have a much greater walk than if we are jaded and walking that out half-heartedly. Um, mistakes happen. Things happen. But there are tools and ways to overcome and also to grow in your marriage and also to redirect your marriage. Um, I mentioned to you guys the power of prayer. Let me look here and see. There were comments made. I love the quote. Thank you, Holly. A couple. Okay, Kelly said a couple. And, and um, Diana said, we had watched them earlier. Todd did a great job. Yeah, they're, they're really well done. Um, you know, I've been in churches where, where they're teaching the wrong thing. And... Um, even, I wish the mountain man was here because one of the things he said is that was just very powerfully done and he was really, he, he believes that more men need to hear that before marriage um, because it is, it is taken out of context. I remember being a teen and going over that and, and you know, being very aggravated that I had to uh, submit to a man because of how it was worded to me. You know, um, at the time, um, growing up, I was, the, the boys on the bus would beat me up, uh, steal my purse. I had a black and blue eye and a bloody nose. Um, so to submit to that, uh, no. I had a real hard time with that. And, and there, are, uh, you know, every one of us has walked out odd circumstances in our lives. We've overcome things. We've maybe not so well overcome things. And we're dealing with baggage. So when we get married, we have a lot of baggage on both sides. And 
when you learn to walk things out biblically, it enables you to walk through your past into your future and into the current and leave a lot of that baggage behind. But as many of you who have been married, I'm sure longer than I, will um, attest to, it takes time, it takes devotion, and it takes an eagerness and willingness to work towards that. The other thing is when we're fighting, we need to remember what we're fighting for. What are we fighting for? We're fighting for the wholeness of a family. And oftentimes when we get in battles, it's because we aren't seeing eye to eye. A lot of that comes with the fact that we both think very differently. Men think one way, women think another. That's why when put together, we can be each other's help me and really make a huge difference. And guys, if you have things to share with me um, on this subject, if there's things you have a feeling towards, um, you know, that you want to express, please don't hesitate. You know this is an open forum. That's why I do this. So share with me because this is where we can help one another. We are both called to submit to one another. The ways in which we submit look different. Yes, exactly. And the when it comes together, and you are able to submit and support. I think that the big thing with that is the support and respect that comes up from both sides that really builds something very strong. Um, I've, I've, in my, in my walk, I've seen a lot of deceit in marriages where people aren't um, upfront and honest. Um, something as simple as purchasing something and keeping it a secret. With the mountain man and I, we don't have any secrets. We've both been burned big time over our lives. Um, and as a result of that, both of us were ready to grow old by ourselves. We were just done. We were done learning someone else's new habits, learning somebody new, dealing with the deceit and, and um, the heartache that comes with a relationship because that's what we both experienced. But we committed to each other and knew each other's circumstances like very deeply. Um, that's one of the great assets I have with my mountain man is that we can talk about anything and we do. We are very open. Um, I'm, we're both very honest. Um, I, I share my heart on my sleeve. Um, he is a guy, he's not as talkative, but we, and you know, guys don't share necessarily their innermost feelings. However, when they are respected and they do feel comfortable and they they feel that love, it and that they are playing the role of the man of the house, and the head of the house, um, it does bring that out. It brings that out because they are in a place of comfort. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, one of the things that I feel extremely, um, I feel is extremely important in, in a marriage is for one, rid of some of our past baggage, uh, forgiveness is one of those things that can really hold us back from enjoying our lives and what God has gifted us with. And we all have people that we need to forgive. Some of those people will forgive and never ever be in contact with again because they are toxic and uh, unhealthy. And then there's other people that we need to forgive and we want them in our lives, but we have to work through that level of forgiveness. Now, this is something that's really important to remember. The lack of forgiveness on our part, will, we will hold ourselves in bondage. That person that you need to forgive may not even know or remember. But you are holding yourself in bondage through bitterness and anger and uh, just the, the recalling of things over and over again because that's what the enemy does when it comes to being hurt. He just sits on our shoulder and reminds us and reminds us and reminds us. And there gets to, you get to a point when you are seeking forgiveness that the reminders, um, Kelly and I talked about this last week, that when those reminders come, 
you learn to not feel the anger and bitterness. You feel empathy, sorrow, um, or even love for the person that may have done you wrong. The other thing you got to keep in mind is this. If you refuse to forgive, God will not forgive you for whatever you've done. And that's something we need to remember. It's more than just holding ourselves in bondage. I've always looked at it that way. And somebody pointed out, said that to me the other day, and I was like, wow, absolutely. Because it is stated in the Bible that if we don't forgive, he will not forgive our, our sins and our trespasses. So it's really important. So down in the description below is a list of resources that I am sharing today. These are resources that I feel really strongly about. If you guys have other resources that you have utilized, please share them because I am a sponge. I love finding new resources, but these are some that have been very powerful. And I'm gonna to continue to share Todd's videos. Those three videos are down below and I highly, highly encourage you to watch them. If you do any work with a youth group, share them with them. It is so important because I feel that if it's instilled in a child to understand the dynamics, as they grow, those dynamics will just mature. Because um, like I said, when I, was, when I was learning it and the way it was being taught to me, I, at the time being a teenager, had no desire to ever want to submit to a man because of the quality of men I was surrounded with, or boys whatever you want to call it. They weren't men. Um, a, a man, in my opinion, is um, a man that fears God. And, and that's my opinion, but there is nothing more powerful and more alluring to me than a man that fears God. Um, but the book that I'm referring to for forgiveness is When You've Been Wronged, Moving from Bitterness to Forgiveness is by Erwin Lutzer. He is um, the pastor at Moody Radio. And... Um, He's amazing. Uh, they play a lot of his stuff on Moody Radio, and he is just a wealth of information and really does amazing things. Um, you can find that book by going to treyerwilderness.com slash wronged. Now, this is the other thing I encourage. I found out something very interesting when I read that book. When I read that book and I was seeking forgiveness of certain people because they were very, it was very hard, it was very raw, I found that when I was going through that book and I hit the chapters that pertain to those people, I was angry. I was very angry and I was very hurt and uh, greatly bothered and, and doing a lot of aha moments when I, when I read that. And I read it again later on, I don't know, a couple months later, a year later, I read it again. And I remembered... Um, being in the book and being bitter and angry. And then when I read it the second time, I felt compassion and love. So that to me was a very, very good sign that I had progressed and that I had honestly healed. You know, because there, those people still came to mind because of what they had done to me. But I, I could could see very clearly my healing. So I encourage you to read that more than one time. Um, we all have people to forgive. And in our marriages, there's going to need to be forgiveness for little things, for big things, for huge things. But the more committed we are, um, and, and keep in mind um, when I say that, I want to be careful when I say that. If you are in a relationship where you are being physically abused, that is wrong. And I'm not saying that it cannot be turned around. I've seen God, through prayer, completely transform people. But if you are in a situation that is unhealthy and that you are, your life is in danger, please seek help, okay? First and foremost. Forgiveness is something that will come later, but please seek help and get out of, of an abusive situation and um, take care of yourself and your, and your children if that is the case. Okay, let me see here. Angela, I've got to go, but I'll try to watch the replay. Awesome. It was good to see you, Angela. We'll be praying for you. That's exciting with your 50-acre property. I will. We will definitely be praying for you. 
Diana says, I highly, highly recommend Men Are Clams and Women Are Crowbars. Awesome. I have not actually read that book yet. Um, I listened to uh, Dr. Clark on Moody Radio the other day when I was driving and amazing. Uh, so he is the author of that book. Um, so I will be getting that and reading that. Come on. My finger is not working. Kelly's... Aha. Kelly said, I've read it twice now and was touched by many parts and it came across totally different. I'm going to read it every year as a good reminder base. That's an awesome idea. But isn't that cool? I mean, I, it was very blatant to me. Um, you know, I, I won't forget how I felt the first time I read it. But then the second time I read it and feeling so different, it was just, it was a utopia moment to know that, you know, God is transforming and God is enabling me to forgive. And when you can get to that place where you, you feel compassion, love and sorrow or, uh, you know, and sorry for them, you know, you've reached that place and it's such a freeing, freeing place, such a freeing place. And uh, I encourage you, I, I encourage that you guys to take that as your first book because we all have unforgiveness in us. I truly believe that because it's, it's something that is not easy to do and most people don't realize they're even in that place. So to improve your marriage that may be perfect already, by reading this book, you will free yourself and I like... Kelly just said, I think I'm going to make that a practice too, reading it every year uh, because it's, it's really important. It's really important because that will free us to be who we are and who we're meant to be. So first and foremost, and I think it's a good one for everybody to read that, you know, both, both spouses to read that book or do it together as a study, you know, um, that could, that could be nitty gritty, depending if you're having to forgive each other. Um, so you make that decision. Um, but it is a good, it is a really good book. And it's something good to read um, with teenagers too and bring into a Bible study for teens. Because, you know, things were rough when we were growing up. People were, you know, kids were still mean. Kids will be kids. But today's society is very different. And if we can instill in our children how to walk things out, and how to forgive, but also to set boundaries. Just like I said, if you're in, an in, in danger in a relationship, don't stay there. And this will teach our children to set boundaries, which is something it took many of us many years to do. It's not something that we're taught. Um, and, and those are important things. Okay, Kelly is referring to Diana regarding the book. So the other books that are listed are The Power of a Praying Wife, The Power of a Praying Husband, The Power of Prayer to Change Your Marriage, and I added this one as an extra because they all are really fabulous, The Power of a Praying Parent. Now, this is where I said, you can see that very clearly. I feel very strongly about the power of prayer. Like I said, I have seen people completely transformed from a very harmful, um, self-motivated person um, to a, a God-loving person. God can transform. And, and like I said last week, we do not have the power to change people. And by trying to change people, we can cause more problems. This is not our job. But through the power of prayer and asking God to intervene, it is extremely, extremely important. Now, something just popped in my head, and this occurred to me before doing this today, and I didn't make a note, but God obviously wants me to say this. Um, in a marriage, in any relationship, things can be tough with our children, with our friends, with our spouses. There are many people who just speak freely about these situations with anybody. Um, I want to encourage you against that. It can be very difficult to find people that we feel very comfortable and thoroughly trust. And I'm going to say with our lives because when you have struggles in your family, and you openly share that. And you are sharing that with people who don't 
have respect for you and they go share that with somebody else and it all gets out and it gets around and it comes back around whether to you or to the other person it is damaging and it is and if you are working to repair that is going to add more damage and maybe make it unrepairable as a result put it this way as well you and your just as an example you and your husband are at a party you're across the room talking to your girls friends and and sharing you know how awesome your husband is and there was something bugging him or you guys had a tiff and that was what was on the first thing on his mind and he openly shared you know about how he was aggravated you're not gonna want that to come back to you what we need to make it a point to do in our relationships is for one anyway we need to focus on the good we need to focus on the good. Every one of us is flawed. Every one of us is going to make mistakes. Every one of us is going to get tired and short and snippy. It just happens. When you learn that they're tired and short with you is not directed at you, it's just that they're tired, you don't take it personally. It bounces off your armor. And you can still focus and love the person that made you breakfast this morning just to be nice to you. If you focus on the good and let some things go that you clearly know are, are not intended for you. And you can always ask if the snippy comes your way, you know, okay, did I do something that I'm supposed to deserve that snippiness? You know, there's, there's healthy ways to communicate on that and to discuss that. Um, but it, it is important to find healthy people to talk to. There are situations we will go through in our marriages and in life that it is healthy for us to have somebody to talk to. You can seek somebody that you can pay to talk to. I would suggest that you seek somebody that's recommended or somebody that is uh, from certain, like Focus on the Family, uh, Moody Radio, Family Life, they have resources. I would seek, if you're seeking someone in that regard, I would seek somebody from those resources. They're down below. Sometimes, I will, I will say that sometimes, sadly, the pastor and the pastor's wife aren't always the best resources. I've experienced where um, I've encountered pastor's wives um, and pastors um, talking about other people and saying things that shouldn't have been shared with me. So how do you find the right person? If you need somebody to talk to, pray about it and ask God to bless you with somebody that you can talk freely with and have in confidence and, and form a confidence in that person that you can express yourself and share what you're going through and maybe seek some guidance. Seeking good Christian counsel is important. We are called to do that. We are called to join together with other Christian people to pray. Um, that the power of prayer is huge. But I want to encourage you that if you feel the need that you need to talk to somebody, please be careful who you choose. And don't just talk about your struggles with anybody and everybody just because you're hurting. Because if you want to be able to rekindle something that has transpired in your relationship the greatest way to do that is through prayer i want to encourage something that i didn't get recorded in the notes below and that is the movie war room war room depicts a a struggling marriage and struggling people and it also depicts the power of prayer and how to pray so you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash war room. It's W-A-R-R-O-O-M. Um, I highly recommend that. That is a very, very powerful movie. And um, taking our struggles to God should be our first avenue. Um, I can also talk from experience that um, when going through really struggle really big struggles 
as much as God is to be enough, um, the enemy will work us over and we do feel the need to, to express ourselves to somebody. You know, you may feel like you're on the verge of a nervous breakdown trying to handle this all yourself and not seeing God working. And that's something you got to remember too. Sometimes the struggles we go through aren't our struggles. It might be somebody else's struggle close to us that needs God and needs to be transformed and therefore we are stuck in that place of wait till they are transformed. So it can be very, very difficult and um, it's important to have people to talk to that you know will respect you and your family. And it's important that when you discuss situations that might be going on, that you still see the good. I know that's difficult sometimes when you're going through some really rough stuff, but if you can focus on the good, by focusing on the good, it will give you a uh, lifeline and that last strap to hang on to that there is good. Remember all the good things that have happened could be, because in marriage, you're not guaranteed a bed of roses and icing on the cake all the time. We're all human, we all fall short, we all struggle, um, we all come in with baggage. So giving each other grace and giving each other mercy as God gives us is really important too. And keeping that line of communication open, that is so, so important. But remember, we can't change people. So praying for them is just so, so powerful. So, so powerful. There have been times in my life where I was wearing my knees out. But you know what? It was a great place to be because through those prayers, I saw such transformation. And that applies not just to our spouses, but to our children too, and ourselves. You know, we all have room for um, improvement. And when we're willing to see that and see our faults, allow God to call us out on the mistakes we might be making, on the things, you know, he may lay it on heavy on our hearts that we may have something to adjust. And we need to heed that with an open mind and be willing to make those corrections too. Um, you guys have been sharing, I wanna sh touch on this too. Okay, for women, I really like Living Virtuously by Erin Harrison. Awesome, I will check that out and provide links for those then as well. Um, thank you for sharing that, Kelly. Um, really appreciate that. When it when I notice something is off with Mike, I try really hard to make him feel better and he knows I'm always there to listen and help if I can. Awesome. Otherwise, I pray for him. Awesome. And you know, when we are in a relationship and we are willing to not be self-absorbed and we really pay great attention to our surroundings, both our children and our spouses, you know, you can see when they're off. And um, like I said, men, men are not very free to speak their feelings. Women are more open to share why they are acting the way they are and why they feel the way they do. That's why the book um, Men Are Clams and Women Are Crowbars is a really good resource because it helps you to understand, for one, the differences in male versus female and how they think. You know, men escape sometimes. Men escape, they need to be in a cave. They need to be off by themselves to rejuvenate, refocus, you know, rekindle. We need that sometimes too. But men are more apt to do that where we are more apt to share our feelings. So when they escape, we get offended and think that they're escaping us. They're not necessarily escaping us. They're just escaping and they need to find balance. And we need to give them the space to do that. And... It's important for us to know how different men and women are and how different we think and, and to understand that. And, you know, it's, it was a funny. We had a season where, you know, we were disconnecting really bad and we were truly on the same page, but it was because of the words we were using and, and that. And 
you know, it finally, and so often I'd be like, we're on the same page. We are thinking the same way. We're just communicating it differently. And, and once you learn, you know, you're going to learn so much as you walk through your marriage and as you walk through life and, and learn skills and techniques and, and learn to read your spouse. And that's important. And to give them grace and mercy, you know, just as an example, um, the mountain man worked really hard all day yesterday. Um, he was building a hearth and he came home. He was tired. We ate quick and he went down. He had to work on his hides, his coyote hides. And he came up and I, I mean, you could just see he was toast. His color was bad. He started joking. It's the formaldehyde shade. Um, uh, he's just, he was drained. He was tired. He's, he was exhausted and he was being snippy with me. And I just took a de deep breath and I just was tending to whatever he needed to help him to get him to bed so that he could just go to sleep because I knew that's where he needed to be. So when you don't take it personally and you understand why they are behaving the way they are, you know, they have the same ability to read us and learn us and do the same things for us. And he does. And that's one of the most amazing things is he reads me better than anybody has ever in my life. And I love that because we're in tune. It takes a while to get there. Um, and, and like I said, if you don't get rid of the baggage, it's going to be a lot harder to be in tune with one another and, and to understand one another. So working through the baggage first is most important. Um, but praying for them, um, understanding them, um, seeing that they're in need, uh, it, it goes a long, long way. And sometimes, you know, we have to understand too that men aren't always real receptive. They aren't picking up always. Um, not that it's intentional. Um, it's just because of their makeup. Sometimes they just need to be told. So if you are in a funk and you are having a hard time, don't be afraid to say, you know, look, I'm sorry, I'm acting a little off. This is why. And, you know, maybe just by alerting them, they may learn to become a little more in tune with you. So they need to, to be told or spoken to or shared with sometimes. Don't be offended because they don't know. It's just like when you're doing dishes and you expect them to see that you need help or something. They don't, don't always pick up on that. Um, they don't always pick up on the fact that you might need help with something because you may prove to show that you are a very independent person and they just assume you've got it, which is a good thing. But if you do need help, don't be offended because they don't jump in and help you. Just say, would you mind please helping me with this? I, whatever, you know, um, instead of being offended that they're not just jumping in because sometimes it's just that they need an invitation. So it's learning these things. It's learning as you go. Craig and I decided a long time ago, Diana sharing, she says, Craig and I decided a long time ago that each of us can have that one godly friend who truly loves both of us, to whom we can go when we need to vent or seek advice, etc. We each had input on who that friend was for the other. You know, that's an awesome, awesome um, way to go about that. Uh, What ended up happening for us is that we ended up becoming that person for each of us, that we actually sit down and discuss when something is bugging us. But we are so in tune and so like-minded that we're usually picking up on it. It's kind of crazy. There was a, a season where that wasn't the case. But that's really important, more than anything. I, I see so many people doing that where they, they badmouth each other, you know, and, and share only the bad. You know, of course, when you, when you are communicating that with other people, you're only sharing the bad. You're not sharing how, how all the other good things they've done. Just that one thing that has totally aggravated you. And it's really important to be careful in that aspect. You know, I, I never want anybody to think poorly of my husband. I value him. I respect him. I honor him. And that is why I am very, very cautious with that. Um, you know, there are times when you may need to speak to somebody. And when you do, uh, choosing them carefully is very, very important. And, and you know, if you can't find that person, um, I'd recommend paying somebody to talk to rather than dishonoring and disrespecting and 
having the whole world know. But that's really awesome. And I think that's really, really a great way. Thank you for sharing that, Diana. Kelly says, there we go. Sadly, we are at a point where we were struggling against the enemy and it is so important to have prayer warriors, but didn't. We worked through it with much prayer and struggles. Praise the Lord. But it is so much better having someone to share with. Yeah, um, it, it really is. There are times in life where you're just going to need to let go um, and, and, and to, to just share it. Um, I think it's a part of human nature, but um, it is, it is, it's really awesome when you can work through it together. Um, and I think when you go through those really rough patches, it builds you to a place where you you can discuss the simple things so much easier moving forward. Um, the other thing that's so important in this whole aspect is the devotion to each other. I talked about this last week. You know, the mountain man and I were burned so many times before that a new relationship was really a tough consideration. And it was something that we both vowed that if we took, you know, if we if we married, it was till death do us part and that we would kill ourselves trying to make it work because it meant that much to both of us. You know, we were both tired of being um, screwed over and, and just such odd things happening. We, we both wanted biblical marriage in the worst way. So it was, it was that in and of itself is something it's like that last string to hang on to to know that no matter how hard it would get we we were determined to fight in a biblical and a godly way for our marriage so when you get when you have that security that in and of itself is very huge and then learning to fight for what you're fighting for and not just to fight. Um, and when I say that, it's because a lot of times it's easy to get simply offended. Um, but when you start to learn that what you're fighting for on a daily basis and in life is for the prize, the great reward, the biblical marriage, um, you know, till heaven part us, you know, um, you you learn to do things differently. But without resources, without connection, and I could not imagine without God. When you go through tough stuff, I couldn't imagine what it would be like without having God in my corner. Um, it's very powerful, not only in my healing side of things, but how he has transformed people in front of my eyes, how he has brought me through some of the worst valleys that I've had to walk um, and I'm I'm a better person for it so God on your side is really important Angela says love and respect the love she most desires the respect he desperately needs by Dr. Emerson Egerich awesome awesome that sounds like a really really awesome book thank you for sharing that um, Oh, and Diana says, great book. We were fortunate to attend the first seminar they did based on this book. It was quite a while ago. Huh, very awesome. Thank you for the resources, guys, and thank you for being willing to share. How many of you agree with me the importance of returning biblical marriage to our society and to our country? You know, so many people say there is no God and, and the Bible's a joke, but if that's the case, why are so many fighting so hard to get it banned? If it's nonsense, why even worry about it, you know? God God plays a big role in our country. It was founded on, on biblical principles. And biblical marriage walked out is truly an amazing, amazing thing. Um, I am walking that out now. I can say that because previously I was not in a marriage like that. And it was not a pleasant place to be. And that is where a lot of my fear and my worry were generated because things were being done behind my back and things were sneaky and things were sly and 
things weren't right and I could feel it. And um, when you live in a wholesome relationship, all those negatives go away because they aren't concerns anymore. And when you're both focusing on the same things and the same desires and the same end result, um, it is just so, so amazing. Our problems are related to the lack of God in our society today. Very much so. Very much so. Um, in our schools, in, in our churches. I know that's sad, but in our churches. Um, and I really, I, I really feel strongly. I've, I've wanted to do this, this subject for a long time, and I feel like God had um, kept pushing it off. So there's reason for it happening now. There are some great tools and resources below as well. I'm going to um, look up the ones you guys have shared and add those as well. Um, and, and get into reading those. I am a sponge for knowledge. I love reading and I love improving on myself. I love being better tomorrow from what I was today. Um, and, and we all have room for improvement. Um, and we, we have to learn to show each other mercy and grace, to forgive, and, and to focus on what our role really is in our relationships. We have no foundation to stand on otherwise. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that is what the enemy wants. And that is what the enemy is using um, in our society today to break things down and to make exceptions and to be politically correct. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it's, it's hard to watch. And that's why I feel it's important that we remember where we came from and what we need to do. We are called to be a light. Every single one of us, every one of us that is a believer is called to be a light, to make a difference, to speak God's word, to be disciples. And I know it's not an easy task. For the good part of my life, I was very cautious bringing up those words and saying those things because um, you don't want to be considered a Bible thumper or shoving God's word down someone else's throat. But the thing is, in this politically correct world, when you share how you were blessed, people are offended. So, you know what? At this point, I don't care. I will share my blessings. And they aren't meant to offend anybody. They are meant to empower and encourage other people in their walk. So, you know, those that are offended, you have to think about maybe why they're offended. I don't take, I don't, I am not hurt or affected by that anymore. Where before in my life I was, but I wasn't, my walk with Jesus wasn't near as strong. And like I've told you guys before, after almost losing my life three years ago, things have changed. And I want to call call you guys out and I want to rally you with me. It's so amazing to see our community rallying, loving on its members, loving on other people outside of it and being a strong example of what it looks like to be squeezed and have God come out. <laughs> Some of the other resources that I highly recommend is if you are, well, this is regardless. Um, Family Life's Weekend to Remember, they do it every year. Um, it's, you can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash weekend to remember. It is meant to encourage biblical marriage. It is meant to help um, improve marriages that may be struggling or on the edge of divorce. It is also meant to just be utilized as a weekend, a way to empower you both to just think of how you can improve what's already good. Um, it's an amazing experience. Um, we had the opportunity to do that through our church and it was uh, a really fun time and I do highly recommend it. Great, great resources. Focus on the family is another great resource. They have a website that has resources on all kinds of things from, um, helping our children and praying for our children to marital, to forgiveness, you name it. Um, and they also have, uh, uh focus on the family has, Oh, I know some of you are familiar with it. For the kids, um, something station. Oh, I just totally went blank. Imagination station, I think it is. 
um, with Focus on the Family. It is on their website as well um, for the kids, but it's it's great. It's a great way to start our children off um, learning about God and and uh, has great lessons on it. And you can find that by going to trywilderness.com slash focus on the family. And then Moody Radio is another great resource. Uh, Janet Parshall um, uh, is part of that uh, radio station as well. And that's trayerwilderness.com slash Moody Radio. And then in addition to Todd's videos, thank you, Adventures in Odyssey. I knew it would come. Thank you. I knew you guys would know. <laughs> oh, totally went blank. I could see it, but I couldn't remember what it was called. Um... Joe McGee Ministries is also a fantastic resource. He is one humorous guy, um, very funny, and, and looks at everything in a humorous approach and adds humor to it, which makes you remember it much greater. It also um, adds to it. So his website is uh, treyawilderness.com slash Joe McGee, and it's M-C-G-E-E. -E. And then he also has a podcast, um, and this is uh, the Joe McGee Ministries and Family Ministries. Um, and I highly encourage that as well. TreyerWilderness.com slash Joe McGee Podcast. And you can find this podcast also on the website. So I like the podcast app because when I'm out walking, I can listen to stuff like that or download them and listen to them in the car, whatever. Um, but I do tend to lean toward the podcast apps for that reason. Um, so those are some great resources. But it's just so important that we understand the dynamics of marriage and what it's meant to be and how it can be and how it can be something very wholesome. There is something else I want to encourage greatly and that is praying together. Um, my man and I pray together every night. There are times where we stop throughout the day and just pray together because stuff might be going awry, something might not seem right or we have a reason to take things to God. And I... And I encourage you also uh, to do Bible studies together through the Bible app, the Bible.com. Um, on the web, on their website, they have resources there. But on the app, you can also take different Bible studies. Um, and it's nice to be able to do things together. Uh, we do a lot of podcasts um, together. We also uh, watch Phil Robertson. He has a podcast, but they also record them recording it live and put it on YouTube. Uh, Phil Robertson and his family have some tremendous information as well. If you're not familiar with him, he was from Duck Dynasty. Um, so he is another, he, it is a, unashamed is, is how you can find him on YouTube and on the uh, podcast apps. I did not include that as a link, but I will remember to do that because they've got a great story too and uh, our overcomers. And you know, if we're honest, in every marriage, there are hiccups, there are struggles, there's um, needs to forgive. Uh, it's, it's never going to be easy. But it's, it's when you decide that you want to walk it out biblically, and that you want to hold on tight for the ride and that what you are doing really matters. Today's marriages are no different than anything else in our society. It is a throwaway society. Throw away God, throw away everything. And that is what's happening and that's what we're seeing. And we're also seeing a generation of children that don't understand and see marriage, don't see marriage as anything valuable and are, are just living together and never have any intention of marrying. And um, if they're walking that out with God, that's one thing, but we really need to promote the need for God in our relationships, in our marriage, and, and the importance of it, and how it's supposed to be. There's so much confusion in that, even in the older generations of what God was looking for with marriage and what our roles are. And that is just so important. So I'm going to reverse today's quote that marriage is like homesteading. It takes time, faith, patience, understanding, love, tenderness, strength, and the willingness to work through the unexpected. It needs to be something that we're committed to. It needs to be something that we wholeheartedly um, want to nurture and, and want it to grow and want it to be something amazing. Um, our, 
you know, I talk a lot about educating and learning and, and self care and, um, bettering ourselves. And in order to do that as well, we need to want to do the same thing in our relationships, both with friends and our children and our spouses and nurture those relationships, uh, care about those relationships. And if you haven't watched them, we're going to continue to talk more about this. If you didn't watch Todd's um, videos below, the homework is still listed and there are three videos. They're not long. Um, you don't have to necessarily watch them. You can be doing dishes and have the YouTube playing on your phone or on your computer or whatever and just listen. Um, it's, it's more about what he's saying than, than just watching him. Listen to them. They're, they're very powerful. My computer keeps buffering. I'll have to catch the end of this by replay. Have a great day, y'all. Love you, sweet friend. Thanks for sharing in on this. Um, I am going to end things. I want to talk a little bit about our prayer requests quick. Um, it's really important to know the power of prayer in every aspect of our lives, not just for ourselves and our children and our marriages, but um, when people feel strongly and comfortable enough to ask you for prayer, there's a reason for that. They see something in you that is valuable and, and that um, they like and that they see God coming out in the walk that you are um, sharing. So when people ask you for prayer, be sure to take that really heavily because it's just like what I said to you before in finding somebody very special and very trusting to confide in. I think it's just as important to realize that when people confide in us for prayers, that's pretty valuable too. And we have a very long prayer list down below and I'm very honored and privileged um, that these people have reached out and asked for prayer. And um, I give God all the glory in the miracles and what he's doing here on our channel and our videos and our Facebook lives. And it is just such a great honor for people to reach out and ask for prayer. And I want to share a little bit um, too. We had a, a fella, um, Hillbilly Dad 3 on YouTube, um, reach out to us and ask for prayer for his two new grandsons. They were born and both ended up in NICU. Um, James was able to go home, uh, but Joseph is still in NICU and is still in need of care. And if he continues to improve, he will be released in two to three days. But we need to pray that baby out of NICU. So join me in praying for that, okay? Um, we also have a bunch of new prayer requests since last week. Um, yesterday, we lost a really valuable person in this world. Um, he was an amazing man, um, but he played a big role in the trapping society. And I had the, we, we've had the privilege to get to know him this year. Uh, his name is Delbert Jepson. So if you would please keep the Jepson family in your prayers as well as Intermountain Fur Harvesters. Um, Intermountain Fur Harvesters was started by Delbert Jepson and he has trapped his whole life. And Intermountain Fur Harvesters were made up of him and a, a bunch of his uh, friends that also trap. And uh, Delbert took so much time out of his life to make sure that the trapping world stayed the traditional trapping that it has always been and makes making sure that it is done right and that uh, ethics are kept into it and that he he even pushed to uh, have people have to redo their tests to re-educate themselves so that they are up on the current um, laws and regulations and that they are trapping ethically but what was unique about Del Delbert is, you know how you meet those people in your life that have such value and there's just something really wholesome about being around them? Um, we didn't know him long, probably since January. 
but he just left a mark and an imprint. He was just one of those people that just drew you in. You felt comfortable. You felt loved. He was like a big teddy bear, and he was very free to share his knowledge. And he passed away yesterday morning in his sleep, and uh, it it is uh, wrecking the world of a lot of people. And like I said, he really made an impact on the trapping world here in Idaho. If it wasn't for him, a lot of things wouldn't have continued. Um, many new events wouldn't be wouldn't have happened that are educating and um, drawing new trappers in. So if you could please pray for, for um, his family and for all of uh, Intermountain Fur Harvesters, I would greatly appreciate it. Good morning, Miss Elizabeth. And praying for your mama as well, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, Ethel and Esther need some prayers. They are uh, aunts of Glenn's that could use some prayers. Uh, Ethel is having some problems with her heart. And uh, Esther is embracing a new life. Uh, so if you could keep them in prayer as well. Shelly um, is going for surgery tomorrow. So if we could please keep her in prayer and lift her up for uh, healing and uh, just good well-being. I would greatly appreciate it. And our friend Pat Kenny, who I've talked to you guys about a lot, is doing really well with his infusions that are improving his immune system and helping his immune system to fight cancer. And uh, he, he just looks amazing, and I'm so excited. He is such an amazing man. And if it wouldn't be for him, we would not be trapping the way we are Right now, um, he has lent us his four-wheeler for the last several years, um, which has enabled us to inexpensively trap uh, and, and also be able to keep working at the same time. So we are very blessed by that. But he is just another one of those people like Delbert Jepson that just sucks you in and has so much life and so much to offer. And it's just an amazing thing. So keep praying for Pat. And his son-in-law, Mark, is in Seattle right now getting ready to go through bone marrow transplant and then chemo. Well, he did do chemo and radiation, but there'll be additional um, treatments that he will be uh, embarking on in Seattle. They will be there for quite a few months. So uh, please pray for them as well. And if you need prayer, please do not hesitate to ask. If it's something personal, you do not need to tell us the details. Just ask for prayer. You can email me directly at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. You can uh, private message me or you can leave a comment below. Everyone that's attending this right now is an extreme prayer warrior and uh, you will instantly be lifted in prayer. Uh, we take our prayer requests very um very valuably and um, you guys mean a lot so um, those were just some of the more recent prayer requests but it is a long list so please keep everyone in prayer and if you have prayers please don't hesitate to ask guys if you have things to add in regard to the topics that we talked about today don't hesitate to email me or private message or leave a comment below and thank you for those of you that have been chiming in and sharing and also sharing your resources. Uh, those are valuable resources. There's so many resources out there and sometimes it's hard to find good ones and to know um, what has helped others and to know where to seek those resources. So that's why I wanted to share um, things that have been very useful and powerful for us. And also, um, I'm very grateful that you guys shared. So I will add those links later. But guys, thank you so much for joining. I'm going to say a prayer for us all. Papa, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for blessing this live. And I thank you for allowing us to talk about what your desire is for biblical marriage. And to help people to understand it better. May we be a light in the darkness and help others to understand. And help others to find the resources they need. And help them to have a richer and more amazing marriage to walk out. And I just thank you for your love and your mercies and your grace and for forgiving us. And I just ask that you be with everyone in that's watching this, whether the replay or live. And just wrap your loving arms around them. If they need extra attention, please let them feel your presence. And let them see the miracles that can be worked through prayer. 
And I just thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives. I just ask that you are with the Jepson family and Intermountain Fur Harvesters. And I just ask that you also are with June and Terry and just help them while Terry is healing from his surgery and allow it to be this time that their marriage is rekindled. And be with all those that are struggling in their marriage. Help them to find the resources and the strength they need to fight for uh, the right thing and to fight to keep their marriage going in the right direction. And for those that may be in a situation that their livelihood and their health and their well-being is in danger, please help them to seek the right help. And Lord, I just thank you for all you're going to do in our lives and ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week again at our regularly scheduled time, Wednesday, 